Okay, so before we get to look at definite integrals and uh, areas under the curve, let's look at indefinite integrals. So what are these? So we've already established to say when you look at uh, a derivative of any given function to be, for example, 2x, and then they ask you to integrate. So the integral of 2x is, of course, going to be 2x, and then add the power by 1, so it would be the power 2 divided by 2, so realize that your answer will become x squared. Now, one thing that you are not sure of is you don't basically know the original function where this came from. The chances are it had a constant. Okay. Now we don't know the exact constant that was there. Okay. I'm giving you some of the possible options. Okay. So what you basically do is you need to just add a constant c. So this is now what we call indefinite integrals because of that constant c which is called the constant of integration. And I believe there's nothing more that you need to know about indefinite integrals. Just the idea of you adding a c if you differentiate or if you integrate something. So let's look at uh, some few examples. Determine the indefinite integral of 12x squared <coughs> minus 14x plus 12. So how do you go about that? So the integral is going to be, of course I've said, increase the power by 1. So for the first one it become 3, divide by that. And then for the second one as well, increase the power by 1, become 2, divide by that. Again for the other one where there is such a constant, just add the variable. Since it's like you have to the power 0, so if you add the 1, you just become the power 1. And then if you divide by 1, no change is expected. So, of course, 12x to the power 3, right? Did I forget that? So, 3 into 12 is 4. So, we have 4x to the power 3 minus 7x squared plus 12x. Now, we don't know if there was a constant, so we'll put plus c. This is, this is, this, these are what we're calling indefinite integrals. So, you may have different examples. <coughs> you may have other examples that you've looked at, other different types of integrals that you have. So for example, integral of that. So we've said the integral of of exponentials, what you basically get to do is divide by the derivative of the power. So if the power 2x will divide by 2, and then of course natural log of a base, which in this case is e. Now natural log of base e is just the 1, so you're going to have e the power 2x over 2. Okay. Now, do we just end there? So we'd have to put plus c because we don't know if the original one had a constant. So this is what we are calling now indefinite integrals. So you may have others as well. <coughs> you may have the trigonometric functions. They can also give you. <coughs> These other functions, x to the power 1 over 2, as well. Of course, all these are, we're differentiating them in respect to x. So, in such a case, we know that the integral of sine is, because we know, of course, <coughs> one thing that I like, the derivative of sine is cosine. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. So, in this case, we are reversing, so it's like we're starting from this side. So if you have negative sign, it gives you positive cosine. So if you have positive sign, it's supposed to give you negative cosine. So we are going to have negative cosine of 3x. And then we're supposed to divide by the derivative of what is there. So 1 over 3 plus c. So basically what comes out there is negative 1 over 3 cosine of 3x plus a constant c. Okay. Then looking at the last example there, feel free to pause the video and just try it out. So this is a case now where you have a power of half. So if you add a 1, <coughs> of course you expect you're going to get 3 over 2, right? 3 over 2. Okay. So you understand dividing by 3 over 2 is as good as multiplying by 2 over 3. 
okay so we are going to have 2 over 3 x to the power 3 over 2 and then plus a constant c so these are examples of indefinite integrals let's proceed and look at definite integrals but of course um, maybe before I, I, I go I need to mention that <coughs> you are also capable of finding the value of x okay you are capable of finding the value of x to make it let's consider a case where they've asked us to integrate uh, x squared so if you ask to integrate x squared let's assume the original function here was uh, 4 right it was a 4 and then so expect that if your y is that and then if your value of x is a 1 if your value of x is a 1 or maybe let's take it let's take it if the value of your x is a 2 if your value of x is equal to 2 expect that y is going to be what 2 squared so y will be equal to 8 so if you have given you a coordinate 2 comma 8 and then they ask you to integrate x squared given that the original function cuts through or pass through that line so you are able to find c let's try to see how so if you try to integrate x squared are going to have 2 plus 1 which is of course a 3 and then divide by that 3 so it will be plus c so this becomes your y y is equal to that <coughs> and of course I'm wrong yeah? <laughs> I'm wrong why am I wrong because I was taking x squared to be the original function uh, so yes I'm wrong so let's take it this way let's have let's instead have x so if you have x, the integral of x is going to be x to the power 2 over 2. Wait, 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 wait. No, how is it the power 2? Yes, <laughs> to the power 2. So obviously, I'm still wrong. Anyway, let's go back to this form. Okay, so let's assume the constant itself was uh, x to the power 3 over 3, and then plus, uh, let's say, a certain constant 2. Let's say this is the original function. So in such a case, if we had to have um, a value of uh, a one to be the value of x to be three, yes, a value of x to be three. If it is three, we expect to have three to the power three over three plus two, and then of course three to the power three. To, that is going to give us like what twenty. Okay, let's just assume we have three times three times three. So that will go. That will go. Do you mean if nine, nine plus two? 9 plus 2 is what? 11. Okay, so in such a case, the coordinate will be 3 over 3, comma 11. So if you are told you don't know that the constant was a 2, you can find the value C there. How do you go about that? So what you just basically do is plug in 11 is equal to plug in 3 over 3 plus a C. So you have 11, and then you have minus 9, and then you go to C. So C is equal to 2. So in such a case, you are able to find the actual value of C if they give you a certain coordinate and look out for such questions. They are free max questions. I didn't edit. I won't edit because I want you to see that I can also make mistakes. Uh, okay, so there we are.